on to uh, the next presenter. Yes. I'd like to invite uh, Shankar Raja Ramanji and uh, Arvind. Go ahead. Uh, we look forward now to hearing Dr. Shankar Raja Raman, uh, who is an MBBS doctor and psychiatrist by training, Sanskrit poet by passion, and researcher by profession. He is a recipient of the Badarayana Vyasa Samman from the President of India for his contribution to Sanskrit language and literature. His doctoral thesis was on an interdisciplinary topic that bridged the psychology of emotions and Sanskrit aesthetics. He has a special interest in Chitrakavya, wonder poetry, having composed several original Sanskrit works, such as the Devi Danaviyam and Chitra Naishadham in this genre. His personal expertise in composing Chitra Kavya allows him to appreciate the nuances of Chandas and the extra constraints posed by it in the context of Chitra Kavya. He is currently Associate Professor, Center for Ancient History and Culture at Jain University, Bangalore. He will be speaking today on the interface of Chitra Kavya and Chandas. Over to you, Dr. Shankar. Uh... Thank you, uh, Aravindji. Jnananandamayam uh, <coughs> devam nirmalas patikakritim adharam sarva vidyanam hayagriva mupasmahe. At the beginning, I would like to thank uh, Indika for organizing this seminar on Chandas uh, and everyone involved with it, uh, Meghji, uh, Aravindji, uh, Hariji, as well as Paturiji. Uh, without much ado, uh, let me come to the uh, topic. Uh, my topic is titled uh, Interface of Chitra Kavya and Chandas. Hope I am audible. Yes, you are. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for the <coughs> first slide. Uh, this is the flow of my presentation. Uh, I shall give a brief introduction, a slightly longish introduction to Chitra Kavya, followed by a very brief introduction to Chandas. Uh, and uh, discuss six instances which illustrate the ways in which uh, Chitrakavya and Chandas interact with one another. And finally, uh, as requested by the organizers, a summary in uh, an Indian language. In this case, I shall uh, use Sanskrit to summarize my talk. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, <coughs> uh, to come to an introduction to Chitrakavya, Chitrakavya is often translated in English as wonder poetry, constraint poetry, or sometimes as pattern poetry. The word Chitra here basically means, uh, is used in a sense of wonder. And Chitrakavya is poetry that elicits wonder because of the constraints that are involved in composing the verse. And when I say constraints, these are constraints which are self-imposed by the poet. And these are over and above the constraints. These constraints may not be there generally in the poem, but these are uh, imposed over and above uh, already existing constraints such as meter. And meter is anyhow, we know, uh, is accepted by all classical poets who write in Sanskrit and related languages. Uh, the main uh, crux of Chitra Kavya is to communicate a clear idea as poetically as possible Given there are several constraints, the verse might not be very poetic, but as poetically as possible, but a clear idea with an economy of letters. And, and when I say economy of letters, this is achieved by three different ways, by repetition of certain letters, by non-repetition of letters, and by restriction in the type of letters that are used. And there are several subtypes of Chitra Kavya for each of the uh, three categories that I have mentioned earlier. I shall be giving examples. Uh, Megji, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the first is uh, repetition of letters, which could be again with place constraint or without place constraint. For the first example, I have this verse from uh, Subhashitavali. Tara tara tarai re tai, ruttaro tarato rutai, ratarta tittiri rauti, tire tire tarau tarau, which is called a vyakshari. There are just two consonants in the entire verse, the and ra, and this is a uh, translation by me and Venetia. And in the English translation, we have tried to use four consonants, T, R, S, and N. A titiri in Yeros's snare tires not as it 
tunes its strain on trees it rests on straits nearest to raise its note notes sans restraint here we can see that there is a repetition of the endra but there is no place constraint for the repetition on the other hand there could also be a place constraint for example this verse from my chitranaishadam the first verse of chitranaishadam namo neerajanaabhaya nityaya karunaabdhaye which can be taken as the first line tamo nirasanarkaya daityanika trinagnaye which is the second line and here you see that every alternate letter of the first line repeats uh, in the second line so every alternate letter of the first line becomes the alternate letter of the second line mo mo namo tamo uh, niraja nirasa the ra is repeated in this way throughout the uh, whatever whatever letters come uh, alternatively in the first line also come alternatively in the second line so here there is a repetition but with place constraint coming to the next slide yeah, thank you uh, here uh, there is an illustration of this gomotrika pattern as you see there is a zigzag uh, pattern that evolves because of this repetition and that is why it is called gomotrika gomotrika literally means uh, the pattern that is created when a uh, when a when a cow urinates uh, on the road a meandering cow and it is it is said to be a zigzag pattern the third uh, example would be where there is repetition of letters with place constraint but it generates a shape resembling a real world object in gomutrika there is just a geometrical uh, uh, pattern that is created but you could also the, the repetition could also uh, create a generate a shape that resembles a real world object for example the krishna sarpa bandha or the coil serpent pattern and this is a verse from my devi danaviyam धनुरंकुशकंबुशरांबुजृत्सजटाकुटाकलसारसना a certain pattern uh emerges the table that is given before the pattern shows where the letters repeat for example a is the second letter in the first line but a is also the penultimate letter that is the uh penultimate letter of the fourth line so a comes both in the first line as well as in the fourth line similarly b also repeats b is the third letter in the first line and it is also the third letter from the end uh in the second line so in this way there are pairs of repetitions and this pairing of letters creates a certain pattern which in this case is the coil serpent pattern which is called krishna sarpa bandha <coughs> black serpent pattern so coming to the next uh slide but uh, chitra kavya uh, economy of letters could also be achieved by non repetition of letters for example this is a new uh, chitra kavya pattern uh, which i have evolved uh, in my uh, stotra called as chitra chintamani stava this is called pratipada apunavutta swara where a swara doesn't appear for the second time in any line of the uh, in each line of the verse so this verse is in anushtuk there are eight letters in each line and no swara repeats in a in a line so in a line if i have used a once i cannot use a again so kaivalyam bodhi purnendu here you have i a a o i u a and u and there is no repetition of the swaras so this is also a type of chitra kavya and the third type would be restriction in the type of letters that are used this is also another example uh, of a new uh, chitra kavya called as anantarakshari here verse uh, this is a verse in which each letter in the line in line 2 is the one that alphabetically that is according to the varnamala follows each letter in line 1 going to the next slide uh nek ji can we go to the next slide please yeah thank you so the verse is as follows daya bhara lasa bheda mani veena kara kara dhara mala vaha medha yatishita khala phala so you can see that every uh, 
consonant in the first line first uh, line uh, is mirrored by the next consonant in the second line so the the follows the ra follows ya so the second line has every consonant in the second line follows the consonant in the first line but the swara doesn't change and in english example would be if the line one has bear bread far the line two would have case sees gas so after b you have c but a being a vowel gets repeated after r, r you have s yes, but e being a vowel gets repeated so uh, this is one type of chitrakarya so coming to the next slide can we go to the next slide yeah now coming to the basics of sanskrit chandas uh, this has been discussed by others too but just a summary all short vowels take one unit of time to pronounce and are given a score of 1 and usually represented by the symbol u all consonants combine with short vowels for example ka ki ku kr kr take one unit of time to pronounce and are given a score of 1 and are represented by u all long vowels a e u etc take two units of time to utter they are given a score of 2 and are represented by a horizontal line all consonants that are combined with long vowels also take two units of time to utter and they are also given a score of 2 and are represented by a horizontal line and letter that precedes a conjoined consonant that is a sanyukta akshara is always considered as long even though by itself it is short for example the letter sh in shambhu though it by itself it is short because it is followed by a con conjoined consonant samyukta akshara mbhu the sh becomes sh is considered as long coming to the next slide yeah uh, <clears throat> there are two types of meters vritta and matra and vritta is a type of meter which is regulated by number of letters in each line and their long short syllable a long syllable and short syllable distribution the lagu guru prastara example you have this meter totaka which has 12 letters in each line the commonest example which everybody can relate to would be the uh, uh, verse from the suprabhatam venkatesha suprabhatam kamala kuchachu chukka kumkumato the previous example dhanurankusha kambu sharambu jabrit which i had shared is also in the totaka meter here in e, uh, the syllable distribution is uh, two lagu followed by a guru two lagu followed by a guru and so you have three uh, four pairs uh, four uh, sets of two lagus followed by a guru na 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 so totally you had 12 letters on the other hand another group of chandas is called as matra chandas where uh, what is regulated is the total count of syllable syllabic instants in each line for example in the arya meter you have the total count of Uh, syllables is 12 total count of syllabic instants is 12 in line 1 18 in line 2 12 in line 3 and 15 in line 4 the distribution of long and short syllables is flexible but the total syllabic count must be uh, is is what is restricted so only total count of syllabic instants is regulated 12 can be for example written as 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 or you can have 1 plus 1 plus 2 Plus one, plus two, plus one, plus two, plus two. So coming to and there are several other patterns that are possible. So uh, just to represent this, uh, the famous Shatpadi Stotra, Avinaya Mapanaya Vishnu Damaya Manash Tamaya Vishayam Rajatrishnam Bhuta Dayam Vistaraya Taraya Samsara Sagarada. So um, <clears throat> if we count the number of matras, syllabic instants in each of these four lines, Avinaya Mapanaya Vishnu is one line. Tamaya mana samaya vishayam rudra krishna is one. Bhuta dayam vistaraya is the third line, and taraya samsara saagara taha is the fourth line. And if we count based on the rules that were discussed earlier, you have twelve uh, syllabic instants in the first line, eighteen in the second, twelve in the third, and fifteen in the fourth. So, uh, coming to the next slide. So now coming to the uh, important point of uh, discussion. Uh, <clears throat> interface of chitrakavya and chandas i shall be discussing six instances the first instance is uh, an obvious way in which ch uh, chandas and chitrakavya uh, 
uh, um, uh, interface of chandra sign chitra kavya how they interact with one another so you have a particular type of uh, chitra kavya called as varnachuta or garbha kavita which is indi which is in fact based on chandra itself you could call it as embedded verse the word varnachuta is given for such a such a verse by uh, hemachandra in his kavya anushasana but uh, otherwise commonly it is known as garbha kavitva and what is garbha kavitva removing certain letters from the original verse leaves us with a new verse in a new chandas and uh, the example given by uh, hemachandra in his kavya anushasana is very interesting you have this particular verse in the meter called as siddhi which is which has 21 uh, letters in each line uh, siddhi is more commonly known as champakamala it is one of the five uh, khyata karnataka vrittas which is commonly employed in both uh, telugu as well as in kannada poetry uh, and sometimes it is also called as champakavali which seems to be a misnomer seems like champakavali is uh, mispronounced as panchakavali uh, but this is the verse which is provided by uh, hemachandra ಸೀತಂದ್ರಶೀರಸ್ರಜಾರಚಿತಮೌಲಿಶಿರೋಮಿಮೌಕ್ತಿಕೈಸ್ತಥಾ by hemachandra has abhinavam so coming to the next slide yeah thank you uh, in this particular verse if you remove the first two letters and the last seven you have a chandas called as pramita akshara propinga in the same way if you remove the first seven and the last two then you have uh, uh, another chandas called as druta vilambita propinga the verse itself is a verse that describes shiva and parvati but if you remove the first two letters and the last seven letters you get a new verse in pramita akshara which is a description of shiva alone in the same way if you remove the first seven letters and the last two letters another new verse props up which is in a different chandas called as drita vilambita and in this case the verse is not on shiva but on parvati combined together the verse is on shiva and parvati so uh, just to read out one of those so the pramita akshara would be na 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 so nrishira uh, srajara chita mauli shiro ruchiro dwadrik krutula lat tate vikata taha sala litam vadanam navameshwaro bahati veshamaho this is shiva's verse and parvati's verses rachita mauli shiro mani mauktikai prutula lata tate tilaka kriya sala litam vadanam smita peshalam vahati vesham aho tuhinadri tuhinad tuhinadrija and um, by chance i um, saw certain texts called as kavi shiksha texts in relation to this and found that several kavi shiksha texts especially amarachandra yatis kavya kalpa lata vritti vritti provides a long list of such embedded chandas which are, uh, it is used as a um, teaching tool for practice in chandas so coming to the next slide yeah, this is a excerpt from that uh, uh, work kavya kalpa lata vritti so here he, in fact this is a very big list uh, i have just uh, highlighted a small portion of that list and here he discusses about how several other uh, chan- sa- several chandasas are embedded in other chandas for example badrikaya ante laga abhyam rathodata so to a, to the chandas called as badrika if you add lagu and guru in the end you end up with rathodata in a similar way he lists several other chandas and the embedded other chandasas in those uh, original chandas so coming to the next slide one uh, example of instance one is where there is specificity in the letters removed in the previous uh, instance i i spoke about how if you remove two letters uh, in the beginning and seven letters in the end you get a new verse but here there could also be non specificity in the letters removed the letters that are removed could be random this is an example from ratnakara's haravijaya you have two verses in shardula vikridita meter with 19 letters in each line ಸಶ್ರೀಮಾನ ಮೃದುರ್ ನಿಸರ್ಗಗಹನೆ ದರ್ಪಾನ್ ನಿಕೃತ್ತ ವಿಶೋ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ
in this if you remove certain random letters uh, or if you isolate certain random letters in fact rather than saying remove certain letters i should say isolate certain uh, letters you get a new verse which is in arya this is such a arya verse which is caught from the um, uh, shardula vikrita is called as the utha arya the arya that emerges such a arya verse which is caught from the Uh, Shardul Vikrita is called the Arya. The Arya that emerges. The Arya verse which is called. Yeah. So uh, the Arya verse uh, that emerges is as follows: Shri Durga Datta Vamsha Sarada Yagoshti Rasena Lalitaankam Ida Mamrta Bhanu Sunur Vyadhat Taratna Karakavyam. So coming to instance two, can we go to the next slide, please? thank you so what do we do when rules of chitra kavya and chandas clash with one another so you know that these are two formal aspects of poetry but sometimes the rules of chitra kavya can clash with rules of chandas and how does one reconcile and manage both so uh, <clears throat> to give out the secret it is manageable by use of sanyukta akshara sanyukta akshara has come to the rescue for example this is a verse from my devi danaviyam which i had discussed earlier to dhanurangu shakambu sharambu jabrit etc coming to the next slide yeah next slide please yeah. can we go to the next slide please the next slide please Yeah, thank you. So first, let us write down write down the Chitra Kavya rules for this pattern. Then Chandas rules for this pattern, and how uh, the two clash, and how when they when the two clash, you can manage by the use of Sanyukta Aksharas. So Chitra Kavya rules have been discussed earlier too with respect to this verse. For example, you have Y repeating somewhere else. Y comes. a is the second letter of the first line but a is also the penultimate letter of the last line b is the third letter of the first line but b is also the third letter from from the back from backwards in the second line so uh, that is what i have listed in the first table in the second table let us look at the chandas rules for this pattern and only rules that are relevant for this discussion are shown here you see that with respect to those letters which repeat in some cases a for example let us take a is lagu because it comes it is the second letter of the first line but a is also the penultimate letter of the fourth line but even there according to chandas rules it is lagu but this is not so simple in all other cases let us see with respect to the letter b b is the third letter from the first line and b is also the third letter backwards from the second line but you see that in one case it is guru but in another case it has to be lagu so how do you manage uh, uh, you have the same letter but in one case it should be guru and in another case it should be lagu we manage by inserting sanyukta aksharas next to these letters because a sanyukta akshara that comes after a lagu makes that lagu guru so at the same time it remains lagu as well as because of the sanyukta akshara that comes later it uh, comes next it also becomes guru so if you go to the previous slide uh, meg ji can you go to the previous slide please meg ji can you go to the previous slide previous slide sorry not the next slide previous slide Yeah, previous to this previous to this slide meg ji yeah thank you so you find that the verse has some sanyukta aksharas here and there dhanuranku kambu tasva etc and in these places the sanyukta aksharas have thank you the sanyukta aksharas have not come randomly but the sanyukta aksharas serve a particular purpose they make the previous letter 
guru in spite of it being lagu so uh, thank you megji you can go to the uh, go to slide number slide number 18 please <clears throat> instance 3 so uh, let us discuss instance 3 how do you adapt a chitra kavya pattern that has traditionally been attempted in a vritta chandas for a matra chandas so some patterns are possible only in certain meters for example the mala bandha which is a garland pattern can be attempted only in a meter whose total number of letters is a multiple of 7 the repeating unit here is shown shown diagrammatically here and you have in each this this is the repeating pattern of the mala bandha these flower with four petals and to uh, to create such a flower with four petals you require seven letters and therefore you can use only a vritta where the total number of syllables is a multiple of seven for constructing this mala bandha but suppose i need to construct this mala bandha in the matra chandas how do i modify a matra chandas for the purpose of creating a mala bandha so can we go to the next slide so uh, this is an example of a mala bandha verse in a vritta with 14 letters in each line the vritta is called praharana kalika and uh, usually mala bandha is constructed in a vritta and so this is uh, as it is usually practiced but suppose if i have to construct the same uh, mala bandha in a matra chandas so you see in 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 this example in this vritta example navaravati vashe you have the letter v alternating in the first group of seven then again you have the letter nu alternating in the second group of seven navaravati vashe you have v coming alternatively in danu tanu janishi you have nu coming alternatively again tvamayi mai manak you have m coming alternatively so you have these sets of seven letters where each alternate letter is the same and that set of seven letters is one of the flowers in that garland so coming to the next uh, slide can we go to the next slide please yeah this is a, a figurative uh, representation of uh, the mala bandha so you start with na the downward arrow towards va then the right sided arrow towards ra then again the left sided arrow towards va again from va towards t from t towards va and from va towards uh, vashe sha so in this way the entire verse is composed can we go to the next slide but if i need to compose a verse in this pattern using a matra meter such as geeti the total matra matras in a geeti is 60 so 12 18 12 18 so the number of syllabic instants the time distribution is 60 syllabic instants but if i have to distribute this 60 units of time among short and long syllables in such a way that the total syllabic count is a multiple of 7 why 7 because i can create a mala bandha only in a meter which is a multiple of 7 so i have to distribute these 60 units of times in such a way that the total syllabic count is a multiple of 7 so one solution is a verse from my mala madhavam धाराधराभिरामे यौवनवति वत्सपालकुलतिलके चलदलकलतास्तोमे रमे तमे चित्तमस्तमलमग्रे कैन यू गो टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड हियर इफ वी काउंट द नंबर ऑफ सिलेबल्स नॉट द सिलेबिक इंस्टेंस बट द नंबर ऑफ सिलेबल्स यू सी दैट देयर आर सेवन सिलेबल्स इन द फर्स्ट लाइन 21 टोटली यू सी दैट देयर आर 42 सिलेबल्स and 42 is a multiple of 7 at the same time it is also following the rules of matra chandas so you have 12 uh, 12 syllabic instants in the first line 18 in the second 12 in the third and 18 in the fourth and thirdly it is also uh, it also has an uh, embedded chitra kavya mala bandha so for example the first line dhara dhara abhirame you see that ra is alternating so dhara dhara bhira similarly the next group of seven has yavanavati vatsa so va 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 is repeating palakula tilake you have la repeating alternatively so this is following all the three rules the rules of chitrakavya the rules of uh, so many syllabic instants 
necessary for uh, matra chandas like geeti and the rule of b the total number of syllables being a multiple of 7 all the three rules have been followed here so coming to the next slide this is another solution and this another solution has been put basically to show that there is not just one way of solving this puzzle you can have multiple ways of solving the puzzle of where you need to match the number of syllabic instants and also the number of syllables and also incorporate a chitra kavya so uh, in the second example for uh, if you compare verse 1 with verse 2 you see that verse 1 line 1 has 12 syllabic instants as it has to be for the geeti but that those 12 syllabic instants have been achieved by using seven syllables in the same way for verse 2 line 1 the same 12 syllabic instants have been achieved not with seven uh, not with seven syllables but with eight syllables so this is how uh, there are multiple solutions possible coming to instance 4 some chitra kavya types can be attempted only in certain specific meters while others can be attempted in a wide variety of meters for example sarvato bhadra muraja bandha etc can be attempted in the chandas with eight letters in each line mala bandha can be attempted only in the chandas where the total number of letters is a multiple of 7 gomutrika on the other hand can be attempted in any chandas and that is why i have used it in my chitra naishadam and uh, without discussing too much but uh, i'll just give a gist of the reason why some chitra kavya types can be attempted only in a chandas such as anushtup with eight letters in each line this is related to the following fact though there is no restriction in the number of letters in each line of a sanskrit verse the number of lines themselves are always restricted to four so this is the crux of the reason why certain chitra kavyas can be attempted only in certain meters like anushtuk so uh, going to the next slide just three more slides to go uh, this is the sarvathobhadra all round pa all all round palindrome which can be attempted only in a chandas which has eight line eight letters in each line coming to the next slide if gomutrika uh, gomutrika is what i discussed earlier too the zigzag pattern if gomutrika is composed in a chandas with even number of letters in each line then every even letter of first and second lines will be identical to every even letter of the third and fourth line on the other hand if gomutrika is composed in a chandas with odd number of letters in each line then every even line letter of the first line will be identical to every even letter of the third line and every odd letter not even letter but every odd letter of the second line will be identical to every odd letter of the fourth line this is uh, represented in tables below the first example is where you have even number of letters in each line eight the second example is where you have odd number of letters in each line that is 11 so as you can see uh, in the first uh, a is the second letter in the first line a is also the second letter in the third line uh, on the other hand uh, when there are e odd number of letters a is the first second letter in the first line and a is the second letter in the third line but f is the first le first letter in the first second line and f is the first letter in the fourth line so the matching should be different the first and the third line the matching should be between the even uh, let even uh, e even letters and in the second and the fourth line the matching should be between the odd letters coming to the next slide instances 5 uh, and 6 i'll just uh, i'll not go into details uh, one way of bringing novelty in chitra kavya is by attempting to compose a pattern in a chandas that has not been traditionally employed for it for example mala bandha which i talked about a few slides earlier has traditionally be composed in basanta telaka which has 14 letters or sarakdara 21 letters in each line or champakamala 21 letters it can be composed only in a chandas where the total number of letters is a multiple of 7 but i have composed one in praharana kalika uh, which has 14 letters in each line similarly chakrabandha is generally composed in shardula vikridita which has 19 letters for a chakrabandha you require an odd number of uh, letters in each line so it is traditionally composed in shardula vikridita but i have a verse in the mattamayuri which is which has 13 letters when one evolves a novel chitra kavya pattern one must also figure out the chandas in which it can be attempted uh, when i evolved the novel pattern adhon milita padmabandha in my devi danaviyam i also had to figure out that it can be attempted in the ruchira meter ruchira meter which has 13 letters in each line because the pattern in each line is a b c b a 
then you have DED and then FGHGH. So there are palindromes, three palindromes here. And those three palindromes, if they have to fit, to fit together in a line, then that line must have 13 letters uh, totally. So I have used the Ruchira meter, which I found was suitable for that new uh, type of Chitrakavya, which I evolved called as Ardhon Milita Padma Bandha. So uh, coming to the last slide, Pratipaditasya Vishayasya Samskrita Bhashaya Saram, Prathamato Maya Chitrakavyasya Chandasascha Stulaha Parichaya Pradattaha, Tadanu Tayor Vitas Sambande Ye Visheshaha, Te Shoda Vibhajya Soda Haranam Nirupitaha, Te Visheshaha Yime, Prathamataha Yekasmin Chandasi Chandon Tarasya Antar Bhavo, Yasya Varnachutamiti Garbhakavitpamiti Vanama, Dvitiyam tu Yathasthanam Samyuktaksharanam Niveshanena, Paraspara Bhadakayo Api, Paraspara Bhadakayo Rabi, Chandas Chitrakavya Niyamayo, Samarasyo Papadanam, Tritiyam tu Matra Chandasi Mala Bandhadinam Nibandhane Upayaha, Chaturtham Tavat, Chitrakavya Visheshanam, Chando Vishesha Pekshitpam, Tat Anapekshitpam Va, Panchamam, Chitra Kavya Nirmane, Nutana Chandasam, Upadeta, Shashtam Punaha, Nutana Chitra Kavya Prakaranam, Nirmito, Anugunanam, Chandasam Chakrahanam, Iti Bhadram, Namaskara. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajaraman. That was a wonderful talk. And actually, I lost out on listening to some parts of it because of the sound crash, sound card sure. crash. But I'm no seeing the responses from the other panelists. And that's, it's fabulous. Uh, I apologize again for some of the slides uh, related issues. You had to mention it a couple of times, but I couldn't hear it. Uh, but thank you very much. Thank you for that uh, uh, for that talk.